I love our San Antonio Spurs, but this is not a November to remember. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. What is up, San Antonio Spurs fans? Welcome to TSR Sports. Just got finished watching the Lakers game this morning, and, uh, you know, it fit one of the scripts that we've seen all too much this season. The Spurs get down big in the first quarter or in the first half. Come back, fight in the third quarter. Love the fight I saw last night. Kellen Johnson had a nice little, I think, 10-2 run versus the Lakers. Jeremy Sohan looked fantastic last night. Maybe one of his best games in the Spurs. But then in the end, in the fourth quarter, all of a sudden, the paint became the Red Sea imparted. As I saw LeBron James and Anthony Davis just score at will in the paint. And another Spurs loss. That's seven losses in a row now. And if you look at November... Until I just looked at this this morning, Spurs fans, and just a heads up, this is quite unscripted. I'm just going off the cuff here and just speaking from here. We're 1 in 12 this month in November. 1 in 12 after a surprising 5 and 2 start. November has been just an absolute disaster with our one win versus the Milwaukee Bucks, who were depleted. I don't believe Giannis played. And then we have tons of blowout losses. And in watching the Lakers game this morning, I heard the announcers, and I think they're the Lakers, and I'm pretty sure they're the Lakers announcers. Time after time, I heard the Spurs are the worst in this. Turnovers, first quarter deficits, uh, point margin and losses. Just so many stats we kept rifling out about our team, about how bad they are, how bad Kelvin Johnson is right now. Just And it really got me thinking, are we the worst team in the NBA? Do we take away that 5-2 and two start, Spurs fans? Are we the worst team in the NBA? Because when you go to the overall standings, we're, uh, well, it's not going to look good. We take a look at the Western Conference with the Lakers' win last night. And let me make sure I'm up on uh, the screen so you can see it. We're second to worst. We're two wins ahead of the Houston Rockets, who are 3-7 and seven in their last 10. And we're 1-9. and nine. And right now it looks like there's no fix in sight for our Spurs. And if we take a look at just the league in general, because we can isolate the standings by a league, for the tank, uh, the tank crowd, well, I, I guess you're happy because now we're in that 14% category where we are the one of the four worst teams in the NBA. And I could see Orlando passing us, maybe eh, Detroit, Houston, maybe not. If things keep playing out the way they are, though, and I, set, I expect the Lakers to fully get some, you know, keep ascending. And I, I, I hope Charlotte gets better because we have a protected pick from them, although they've, they've been pretty bad. They won two in a row, though. But we may just finish. As a bottom three team in the NBA. And at the start of the season, I predicted we might win 25 games. We keep playing like we have been in November. We will be lucky to get to 20. And if that's the case, if the Spurs team does not win at least 20 games, this would be the worst Spurs team in my lifetime. I became a Spurs fan around late 1990. And it's just not these losses that are getting to me as a Spurs fan, as a content creator, but the way that we're losing, the way that we've been blown out so many times this year. When there's so many games where I'm, you guys, if you know, those of you that are subscribed, you know, those of you who are new to the channel, I call play by play and do live streams for the Spurs. And there's so many games where it feels like it's over after the, after the half. It feels like we're just, we're out of it. We're down by 20 something at halftime. Or at the very least, the game's over entering the fourth quarter. And those aren't fun to watch. And I used to do, uh, and I say used to, I used to do weekly recaps. I'm putting those on pause right now. I don't want to sit here and do a weekly recap every week. Spurs went 0-3, time for the good, bad, and the ugly, and I'm just totally beating up the team, you know, not maliciously, not trying to be a, you know, a non-fan, if you will, but I have to call it like I see it, and if players are struggling, I'm, I am I got to report on it, and there's not a lot of positives right now, and it's just, you know, I could tell you guys in the chat, too, like, you love the team, you want to support the team, but man, these games are so hard to watch when they're playing like this and a lot of you know i'm going to see some spurs games next month and i'm spending over probably going to be over two grand to see this team and i'm just praying to the basketball gods please let both games i see be competitive i would hate to see spend so much money be out in the stands yeah going on the fourth quarter down by 20 i'll stay to the end of the game i'll still root for the team uh, man i now what one other thing i want to touch on in this video is i gotta expect there's comments or comments will be coming to bench Kelvin because Kelvin right now, or if there's going to be the Spurs fan that says trade him, he has, I can't sugarcoat it. He's my favorite Spur on the roster right now. He's been just, it's the worst stretch of his career. During this seven game losing streak, he did miss the one game against Sacramento. He, he's been bad. He's shooting under 30% from the field. Exceptionally bad in the last three games. As you can see, he's been four of 20, two of nine, where he got benched. He got benched at the start of the third quarter against the Pelicans. And then last night, 
6 of 23 versus the Lakers. His three-point shooting is uh, going from one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA to start the season has just fallen off as he's taken contested shot after contested shot. He's completely out of rhythm, shooting 22% from beyond the arc and averaging only 13 points per game. Where not only just a couple weeks ago, we were talking about Kellen Johnson maybe making his first All-Star game when he was averaging over 23 points per game. And right now, I think after this stretch, he is down to, for the season, he's averaging 20 points per game. Right on the line and shooting 41% from the field and 37% from beyond the arc. And I, this video is not here to beat up KJ. I hope he gets out of this funk. He, he showed us that one brilliant spot in the 10th oh, tenth quarter. The third quarter when he won a personal 10-2 run against the Lakers. But the Spurs are not going to win games at all while he is shooting like this. Trey Jones has also been in a funk. There was a time uh, this morning when I was watching Lakers game where we had Romeo Langford, Jakob Pertl, and Jeremy Sohan on the court at one time. And while sure, that's fine defensively, um, who the hell is going to shoot the ball? I mean, we've got nobody against to spread the floor there. Props to Jeremy Sohan, by the way. Again, I think I read LeBron James had nine turnovers last night, and Sohan was... You know, he was the one defending him, and uh, I do think he had one of the best games of his young Spurs career. But, man, the, these loss of Spurs fans, it's really, as a content creator, it's it's causing a uh, now an internal struggle with me because I want to cover the Spurs. I want to live stream the games. You guys saw I took last night off. Uh, a group of my friends got together that I hadn't seen in person in a long time, and I decided, you know what, I haven't seen my friends. i got to stop at the local comic book store that's on the way up there. And it's a Friday night, so I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to hang out with my friends. And I'm glad I did that. I had a blast seeing them in person again. It made me realize I want to see that group of friends more often in person than just once in a while because they generally get together every Friday night. And then on Saturday nights, I have a group of friends from Virginia that I get together with over the Xbox. And we game usually from 9, 8.30 to 9 to midnight. Well, there's a Spurs game tonight at 8 p.m. And I'm very conflicted right now. Do I call the Spurs game and just jump online around 10.30 and then play with my friends for a little bit? Or do I just take the night off and just watch the Spurs replay tomorrow morning? Because I have spoilers off. I don't do any social media or go on, you know, online anything. And I can easily watch the game on the recap. It's not as fun watching it alone as it is with you guys. And I sincerely mean that. It is so much more fun doing the play-by-play -play and watching the game's lives with you than just watching it to myself. Because I sit and watch the game by myself and I'm like, I just have this on the couch next to me. And I'm like, well, we suck. <laughs> it doesn't say anything back. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about tonight. I, I'm going to continue to follow the team. I'm going to continue to support the team, clearly. No matter what happens, I love this team. I'm going to support them. But, uh, you know, and not just for me, by the way. This isn't all about TSR or even the fan base, how they're feeling watching this team lose. I, I feel for these guys going out there. I can't imagine going out there and every first quarter you're down 10, 12, 14 points. I can't imagine how that feels to go out there. And for the guys that are, you know, maybe having – one of their best games of the season. You're doing everything you can to keep your team in it, and the team is just playing bad basketball overall. So I feel for the guys. I feel for Greg Popovich. This is a, you know, say what you will. It just I, I hate seeing any type of player or coach in any sport where they've had such a amazing run, and then those last few years, maybe they hit 200 instead of 300. They average 20 points per game instead of 30. You know, Jordan with the Wizards, a perfect example of that. In this coast, Greg Popovich, illustrious career. Uh, I assume at one point he had the highest winning percentage of all time with NBA coaches, but I guess I think he probably doesn't have that record anymore. I didn't research that. Again, this video is just kind of off script. But, you know, losing season after losing season after losing season, and now this year we're 6-14 and 14 and might finish, might not finish with 25 wins, which was my prediction at the start of the season. If we times that by four, we'd be 24-56. and 56. We go one and one, so we might we might actually hit that twenty five win mark. I don't know, Spurs fans. I'm just kind of rambling. I wanted to talk about the team with me not doing a videos in a little bit, and just get your thoughts on the season. There are positives. It's not all negative. I am loving the growth I've seen out of Jeremy Sohan this year. Just you know, it hasn't been all successes, and I did see the Lakers daring him to shoot last night or this morning. Just that he's open. Just looked at him like, take the shot, kid. And he made some shots. And I've seen progression in his game where the mid-range jumper is showing some development. The three-point shot still needs a lot of work. His ability to get into the paint uh, then run the point. We've seen progression to do there out the air. Defensively, Pops are going to put him on the best player, and he's up to the challenge. And sometimes he's going to succeed. Sometimes he's going to fail. But for a 19-year-old rookie, I like when I'm seeing it. You know, Jakob Pertl's doing his Jacoby things for the most part for this year. Trey Jones has surprised me as a capable starting point guard. I still don't. I'm not sold that he's the starting point guard of the future. 
And it'll be interesting to see what happens with our Spurs over the next few months if they keep losing like this. Or, or say they get a little better. Like every six games we're going two and four. And every 10 games, I mean, we're going four and six. You know, if, if they stay around a 33 to 40% winning percentage and clearly stay at the bottom of the, the league, you got to think that Pat, 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 in the front of his Pat, Pat, whatever. Can't talk. Um, they're going to look to make some moves. And that could include three people we've talked about previously. Yaka Pertl, uh, jo Josh McDermott, <laughs> Josh Richardson, and Doug McDermott. See what happens if you don't have a little script next to your screen. They might look to start training players. And you also have to look at it from the player's point of view. I mean, these guys that are veterans, especially a player like Josh Richardson, Doug McDermott, maybe Gorgie Zhang, they're not going to want a part of the rebuild. So the Spurs, there's going to be that, you know, what can we do that's best for the team, but also what can we do that's best for the player? And whatever happens, I hope I hope we get out of this funk. I, I don't want to I don't want to keep seeing this. This is one of the worst months I can remember in Spurs history. I didn't do any research. Um did we have any months like this last season where we literally were one in 12? I know we had some losing streaks the last few years, but I just don't remember a, a period where we were this bad. And not only were this bad, but just some of the, the way we're losing. Lost to the Raptors by 43, the Warriors by 37. The Lakers the first time on the 20th, we lost by 31. Um, and, and just again, so many of these games, it feels like they're over at the half. Or at the very least, they're then over at the end of the third quarter, and fourth quarter has been garbage time. Uh, at least Malachi Brandon getting some minutes. No, there's that. Anyway, that's all I got, Spurs fans. I'll let you know what I decide to do in the community notes, probably around 5, 6, maybe even as late as 7 o'clock. I, I, my apologies for not calling last night's game and being on the fence for tonight's game, but my, you know, you guys know, for me, God, family, friends is always, you know, God, family, friends, and then the Spurs are right there. But I, uh, since I'm not going to be around next weekend to hang out with my friends, uh, I might. I'm thinking I'm just going to try to spend as much time with them as I can with them. So uh, I'm probably leaning, leaning towards not streaming tonight. Who knows? Maybe they'll win. Maybe LeBron and Anthony Davis will get the night off. What can only hope, right? Anyway, I'm done rambling. Thank you all for tuning. I appreciate it. Till next time, and as always, go Spurs, go.